So eating carnivore style or eating keto is gonna destroy your digestive system, right? Totally wrong, okay? And there's some very, very legitimate science to back this up. Now, I was a skeptic at first too. Okay, when I first looked at the keto diet or when I first looked at even the carnivore diet, which is where you only eat meat, I thought, how on earth are you ever going to be able to have a bowel movement? Like, what's gonna happen to your digestive system? Is it just gonna like self-destruct? You have no fiber, right? And it's a common battle. People that are on keto have to talk to people that just think it's crazy because there's no fiber. Well, now there's some pretty interesting research out there that we can point to to show that it's the opposite of what people think. Fiber might actually be causing a bigger problem. So we're going to break it all down. We're going to talk about carnivore and we're going to talk about very low carb keto that doesn't have a whole lot of fiber. Hey, I want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Then go ahead and hit that bell icon there. That way you turn on notifications so you know whenever I post a new video or do a live broadcast to help coach you a little bit. All right, so the first thing we want to look at is this study. So this was published in the World Journal of Gastroenterology. Took a look at 63 participants that had idiopathic constipation, which means they were dealing with constipation, irritable bowel syndrome. They were just dealing with all kinds of gastrointestinal issues. And this is just so wild when we look at this. Okay, so these 63 participants, they said, hey, we want you to go ahead and reduce fiber either all the way or just reduce it significantly or reduce it however much you feel. So a good number of people reduced it down to zero because they really wanted to test it. Another good portion of people reduced it significantly, but not to zero. And another group of people for religious reasons or for other reasons didn't reduce it at all. So what this study was overall measuring was constipation. It was uh, looking at bleeding. It was looking at abdominal bloating and discomfort and a couple of other things like how frequency the bowel movements and things like that. So after six months, here's what's interesting. They found that 41 participants ended up being zero fiber and stuck with it because they felt the best that way. Okay, then we had 16 participants that stayed with reduced fiber and six participants that went ahead and kept high fiber because again, they had to. Well, when we start looking at the instances of bloating and the bowel movements, it is undeniably clear what is going on. And I've put together a fun analogy with this. It's gonna help make some more sense too. But they found that when it came down to bowel movements, those that went down to zero fiber went from having one bowel movement every 3.75 days to having one bowel movement every day. That is a huge improvement. Now, when you look at the reduced fiber side of things, not the zero, but just the reduced, they went from having one bowel movement roughly every four days to having one bowel movement every 1.9 to two days. Still a huge improvement, but not as big of an improvement as if you went zero fiber. What about bloating? The zero fiber group had zero goose egg percentage of people complaining about bloating. The reduced fiber had 31% instances of bloating. And guess what? The traditional higher fiber group, 100% still bloating. I mean, that, that's so clear. So then we have to start looking at what's going on. Like fiber is supposed to be good for us. And don't get me wrong, fiber has its place. But if you're dealing with constipation and digestive issues already, maybe it's not the answer. Okay, so we have to look at it like a traffic jam. Let's take, for instance, we have a, a, just a busy highway. I live near uh, LA, so we've got lots of busy freeways, right? And I just envision this, the 405 interchange just packed, right? Now, I want you to imagine that. That's like your colon just jammed and you're constipated and you're plugged up. Well, adding fiber adds bulk. That's the whole purpose. Oh, you're adding more bulk, it's gonna push things through. So when in any kind of traffic theory does it make sense to improve traffic by adding more cars? No, it's gonna make it worse. So by adding fiber, they had an increase, right? And this particular study found that those that were on the high fiber ended up having a bowel movement on average once every six days. Okay, that's not very good. When you added fiber, it got worse. Now, I want you to think of this too. We have to look at how this is affecting the gut from an inflammation standpoint, which I'll talk about in a second. Okay, we have a huge inflammation modulating effect when we reduce some of the fiber in the gut. So what happens is the gut actually gets a chance to heal and we have less inflammation in the gut. Chronic or idiopathic constipation is more of an issue with inflammation than anything else. So I want you to imagine the same freeway, loads of cars, and you've got cars coming in on the on-ramp, making it worse. Now, the construction workers just put cones through the middle of the two outside lanes, telling people, oh, these lanes can't really go in them anymore. That's like inflammation on the outside of your, your wall, your wall of your colon. You now have inflammation, so now you can't really use that. So you just made your pathway even smaller because of inflammation. So what we have to look at 
is sort of how short chain fatty acids and eating animal products actually helps this. Now I'm saying this with a grain of salt from somewhat of an unbiased perspective, to be completely honest, because I still eat my fiber, but I have a healthy digestive system. Not everyone is in the situation that I'm in. About 5% of the daily energy we get comes from short chain fatty acids, which are a result of eating animal fats and even some animal proteins, if, believe it or not. It's not the fiber. Now I will say, by the way, like people always say, okay, what if I want some snack? And I would normally snack on fiber or something like that. Just making a mention here, if you've never had a Chomps beef stick before, I highly recommend that. That's a good snack to be able to have that's clean, it's non-GMO project verified, and honestly, I just I wanted to take an opportunity during this video to shout them out, because it's a perfect opportunity too. So by the way, down below in the description, there is a link to check out Chomps and get your hands on some of these beef sticks that are perfect for the carnivore diet, perfect for keto, perfect to get a snack that's not gonna mess up your digestive system. So highly recommend you check them out. There's also a special discount down below for anyone that watches my videos uh, down in the description. So after you watch this video, please do go check them out. Okay, so what's happening is we have these things called short chain fatty acids. And these short chain fatty acids are a byproduct of these animal fats like I talked about. Well, short chain fatty acids feed the gut lining. They feed the cells of our intestinal tract and actually heal it. So these short chain fatty acids, believe it or not, get, get turned into ketones. And the ketones have the inflammation modulating effects that feed the intestines. Now there's a study that was published in the journal Nature that found that animal eaters, or people that aren't on a plant-based diet, have significantly higher levels of short chain fatty acids that heal and feed the gut compared to plant-based dieters. That's kind of interesting there. Okay, because a plant-based diet you would think would be great for the gut, but not necessarily when it comes down to an inflammation standpoint, when it comes to an idiopathic constipation or irritable bowel syndrome kind of situation. So what we have to figure out here is, okay, if we're on a low-carb diet, we're already having inflammation modulating effects, but we're also having it affecting at the source, like within the gut itself, within the intestinal tract. So when you look at humans, humans have what's called a smaller cecum, which means that we're not designed to be taking in like bulbous amounts of bulk through our colon. Animals that eat a lot of plants have a larger cecum. Now I know this is gonna be kind of graphic for a second to explain, but if you look at say maybe like a 15, 20, 25 pound dog or coyote or something like that, their fecal matter is going to be much bigger in diameter than it would be to a human that is much heavier, right? So it's like a 200 pound human is gonna have probably the same fecal diameter as like a 25 pound coyote or because they're eating both a combination of like meat and plants and things like that. The point is, is that when you're consuming a lot of plants, you're usually an animal that can handle that. We're not designed to consume a ton of fiber. So it usually backs us up more. So really it's kind of wild. Most of the things that we're dealing with with irritable bowel syndrome are related to inflammation. Now, which came first? being sick and inflamed from sugar and things like that, or literally too much damage at the source with the intestinal tract. So when you look at this study from the World Journal of Gastroenterology and you're, you're, you really dive into the details and you look beyond just the abstract parts of this scientific literature, you can really see that the carnivore diet could work, especially for digestive health, and digestive benefits. So you're not gonna be constipated. If anything, things are probably gonna get turned around. And once again, this isn't an endorsement of any specific diet. This is just the cold hard truth. So as always, do keep it locked in on my videos. And if you can, please do check out Chomps. And even if you don't really want them, just check them out just to at least support this channel. As always, I'll see you in the next video.